they claim that women are asking too much of men. Well, I happen to know a lot of women that aren't asking enough. And they're settling for bottom of the barrel. And they get in bottom of the barrel because they're living at the bottom of the barrel. What's going on, y'all? I know y'all ain't used to seeing me with a do-rag on, but just go ahead and overlook that. I was getting ready for bed, and I came up with this idea for this video because um, there's a lot of people struggling when it comes to dating. You know, I, I've had a lot of women reach out to me expressing how hard it is to find a good man. I've had a lot of guys reaching out to me expressing to me how they're having a hard time finding a good woman. You know, I've even had guys that started out on the red pill uh, side of YouTube. And because of my videos, they, they've expressed to me that I've, I've been able to open their minds and help them to understand one of the most key elements to the whole, to, to dating there is. And that's, you're attracting the kind of person, the kind of people that you're attracting because of you. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has a type. Everybody's uh, doing certain things that's attracting that type to them, whether you, uh, you're conscious of it or not. It's the truth. That's why you keep having the same type of people in your life. The same men keep, attract, uh, keep approaching you. They keep giving you the same lines, the same rap, the same story. The same background. Only thing different is they wrapped up in a different package. Same thing with guys. Same women. Y'all approaching the same as that type of women. And y'all expecting different outcomes. But you know what they say. It's insanity to keep doing the same thing over and over again. Expecting a different outcome. So you got to understand that you have to do some, some stuff different. And what I'm getting ready to tell you to do it's going to end up causing you to be different. <laughs> you got to upgrade your mind if you want to upgrade everything else in your life. So this advice is I'm about, that I'm about to give y'all is actually going to help you in life in general. It's going to help you upgrade your whole life. So if you know anybody that's young, single, because, you know, I wish I had this information like way younger than I um than I was when I started finding this stuff out for myself. If I would have been 18, 19 with this information, I would have been a lot further in life. I probably would have got married a lot sooner. You know what I'm saying? But uh anyways, let me let me go ahead and get into it. First things you want to do is you want to start getting rid of your negative habits. Start replacing your negative habits with positive habits. You like to drink. You like to drink. Go to the club. You like to hang out with, with people that are going nowhere. X that out. Get rid of those things. They're holding you back. I know, you know, some people thinking, oh, it ain't nothing with having a drink every now and then. Hey, if that's what you want to do, fine. You grown. You know, I guess everything is, is okay in moderation, as they say. But just keep in mind, the stuff you're doing right now is keeping you where you are. So if you want different, you got to do different. So what we're going to start doing is instead of you drinking beer all the time or going to the club, drinking liquor or going to the strip club or going to the club, what we're going to do is we're going to start reading books. Nonfiction books, self-improvement books. I can't think of none of them off the top of my head that I used to look at right now. But towards the end of this video, I got a lot of stuff I'm going to go online and actually show y'all that y'all need to keep y'all eyes open for. So if I can remember, I'll go through and, and I'll try to remember some of the books that I used to read during this period of time when I realized this. You're going to read books. You're going to listen to uh, self-improvement podcasts, business podcasts. Um, one of my favorite podcasts that I used to listen to is called The Bigger Pockets Podcast. And it's a real estate podcast. My granddaddy is heavily invested in real estate. He actually gave me a house. 
and having a, a real estate portfolio of my own is something that I've been wanting to, to do for a very long time. So I started educating myself on real estate. I started learning about what ROI was, what a FHA loan was, what a uh, how to get up to ten loans in your name, um, how to you know the best way to go about financing. I started learning about flipping houses. Started learning about buying whole, uh, how to uh, hire a, a contractor to do your work, the work. All of those things I started learning about. Right on top of that, I'm reading books and, and um cut out the rap music. You know what I'm saying? I was listening to podcasts and, and books, audio books, more than I was listening to music. And I was working all the time. So I put my, my AirPods in, my Bluetooth in, and um, I just listen to a, a book or a, a, a podcast all day, every day. And what ended up happening just from doing that, I realized that when I would talk to women, because they couldn't keep up in the conversation, the kind of stuff I was interested in at that point, I realized that I didn't have anything in common with them. We couldn't talk about nothing. I'm talking about ROI. <laughs> I'm talking about buying uh, apartment complexes, starting out with a duplex and flipping and flipping and flipping and flipping. I'm talking about my credit being a 750. I'm, I'm talking about how, you know what I'm saying? All those things. I'm talking about good credit and bad, uh, I mean, good debt and bad debt. I'm talking about all those things. And the women that I was dealing with at the time wasn't thinking about none of that. They were thinking about what club was going to be lit this weekend. They need their lashes done. They got to get a sew in. They going to the, to the store to buy something to wear for the club. They hanging out at their friend's house, having girls night, getting drunk, playing playing card games, and talking about all kind of ratchet activity. You don't on, 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 on a Snapchat and you see a Turk fest. They was doing all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but here I come. I'm trying to talk about things that can be used to build the future, and they can't hang. That ended up showing me you need to start messing with different type of women. You know what I'm saying? Another thing you start doing, well, I started doing, I realized that I needed to do a lot of inner work. I had a, a real bad toxic relationship that I was in, right? I went through it with that relationship. You know, I got to a point where I pretty much was red pill myself for a while, right? But I knew it didn't sit well with my spirit. It didn't sit well with who I am as a person. So I didn't want to spend my life being angry and, and feeling jaded towards women and, you know, being toxic and all that kind of stuff, juggling women. So I just stopped dating for a while, right? And that's one thing that all of y'all that's watching this, if you're having trouble, you're struggling, you need to take dating off the table for a while. This is your season of self-love. You know what I'm saying? We A lot of people talk about self-love, but nobody tell you how to actually do it. All of this is is what I'm talking about. All of this is included in self love. So what I started doing is going like I was doing this. This is something that I used to do on the weekend. I knew I was off on the weekend, right? I get off on Friday. Well, I book me a hotel room like in Miami or Fort Lauderdale because I like to be on the beach, right? I book me a nice hotel by myself that's either on the beach or very close to the beach. Get off of work on Friday in the evening time, drive down to the Fort Lauderdale or Miami. It's like a three hour drive. And I stay on in the hotel over the weekend by myself. In the morning, the things that I was doing, I was getting up like six o'clock in the morning before the sun even came out. I'd be sitting on the beach when the sun come up. Guess what I realized? There's a lot of people that do that. Guess what else I realized about those people? They're not the kind of people that club all night. It's too early in the morning. On a Sunday morning, you go to the beach, and there's people there at 6 o'clock in the morning taking walks on the beach with their shoes off. They ain't been to no club last night. <laughs> Most people just coming home at 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, and we up at 6 on the beach sitting there just looking at the sunrise. 
You know what I'm saying? Putting our feet in the water. It's so it, we at peace. We at one with nature. We we at the like really just in our thoughts praying. You know what I'm saying? Sitting on the beach plotting, figuring out where we going in life, what we want out of life. What do how do we feel about ourselves? What do we need to do to improve ourselves? That's what you sitting on the beach doing at six o'clock in the morning. And on top of that, that's sitting on the on the beach, sun coming up above, you know, on the horizon. You see the sun. That's one of the most beautifulest scenes you'll ever see in nature. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you. And that's the kind of stuff I figured out I, I like. I didn't even know I liked that kind of stuff until I started doing it. So what I'm basically saying is get out of your environment. If you're used to hanging in the, you know, you, let's say you live in the hood or you, you know, not too far removed from the hood. So you used to seeing certain things that ain't too glamorous. You ain't seeing the, you know, people living the, the, the best lifestyle. Most people around you toxic and ain't going nowhere. Get out of that environment. Most, you know, some people ain't got enough money to do it all the time. But if you save up enough money, right now it's tax turn. It's it's tax season. Take your tax return, put you a couple thousand dollars to the side and say, this is self-improvement money. I'm finna invest this in me. Go do what I'm telling you to do. Treat yourself to a weekend alone. You know what I'm saying? It might be scary to some people to, you know, take a trip by themselves. But I guarantee you, if you do it and you get comfortable being alone, you get comfortable in your own company, it pays off dividends in the long run. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people don't realize that they're dependent on other people being around. They can't move. They can't march to the beat of their own drum because they're insecure. You know what I'm saying? You're not you're not comfortable being in your own skin. You're not comfortable being in your own thoughts, probably because you got some trauma. And when you alone and you ain't got nobody with you, you start thinking about the negative things about yourself. You're confronted with what you really need to be working on. And a lot of people don't want to hear that. A lot of people don't want to deal with that. But what you have to do is deal with those things. That's the only way to truly grow as a person, man or a woman. You want to grow as a person. You got to confront your demons. You know what I'm saying? Something else that I wish I would have done a long time ago is get into the Bible. I'm not telling you that you have to run out and join a church right away, but just at least get to know the word. Start off with the, with the gospels. Matthew, Mark, John, Luke, start off with those and just go from there. You know what I'm saying? Start uh, watching YouTube channels that actually teach you Bible. Like, look at Tony Evans. That's one guy that I listen to right now. You know what I'm saying? And he been opening my eyes to some things, but he's not the only person. There's a lot of different pastors and you know, all of them have their own, their differences and stuff like that. So you got to find somebody that actually speak to you, that speak your language, that can cut through the, 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 uh, the clutter that you have running on and running around in your head. Somebody can speak to you in a way that'll get you to, to see things clear. You know what I'm saying? There's been a lot of times in my life where I've had people tell me that I've been able to say things in a way where they, where it actually resonate with them. Their husband, their brother, their mama, their daddy, their cousin could have been told them the same thing I said 20 times in life. <laughs> so they could have been told them what I'm telling them. But for whatever reason, the way I say it, it resonates. So then they listen and then they go to their they cousin, brother, daddy, mama, spouse, or whoever it is and be like, hey, man, you know what I think I need to do? I need to stop doing this and I need to stop doing that. And the person standing there looking like, man, I've been told you that. But as long as you get to where you need to get to, to implement that into your life, that's all that matter at the end of the day. So find the person that can speak to you and, and, and hit you in a way where they actually get your attention. So, like I said, get into the word. You know, that's one of the, the best books you could ever pick up. 
bestseller all time <laughs> for good reason. You want to be wise, the wisdom is in the Bible. What else? Um, also, I know we in this whole accept me as I am age. You know, a lot of people think that they deserve a top tier person without putting in top tier effort. So it's a lot of people that's walking around not taking the best care of themselves. You 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 can stand to lose a few pounds. You don't dress the best. You don't your hygiene ain't the best. You don't get your nails and your hair done as you should. You know what I'm saying? You you ride around in a dirty car. It ain't got to be a Benz. It can be an Altima. It can be a Hyundai. <laughs> it can be any kind of car. Don't ride around in no dirty car where people, as soon as somebody look inside your car, or as soon as you do meet somebody and they and, and you want to ride somewhere, you don't even want them to get in your car because you're embarrassed about how dirty it is. It's all kind of stuff like that going on. Upgrade yourself. In, invest money into your appearance. Get a gym membership. You know what I'm saying? Start going for walks. All of those things, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's only going to benefit you at the end of the day. A lot of people ain't going to do none of this that I'm talking about because they actually have to do something. Most people want a, a, a pill they can take that'll fix their life overnight, but it don't work like that. It take time. You know, it take perseverance, which is a quality that is very attractive in a husband and a wife. If you somebody that can set a goal and you work toward that goal and you you don't stop, you're not distracted or any of that kind of stuff until you actually accomplish your goal and then you're willing you're the kind of person that's going to continue to to do what you have to do to maintain what you achieve. If you that kind of person, you've already set yourself apart from 90% of people that's walking around on this earth. Most people ain't going to never do nothing with their life because they have to actually do something in order to do something with their life. <laughs> Most people do not want to get up and go to the gym because they lazy. Most people don't want to get up and go to work or get a second job because they're lazy. Most people don't want to do the hard stuff. So if you become a person that you train yourself to do things that are hard, but are beneficial at the end of the day, you will set yourself apart from most people. Understand that you have to. I'm telling you, a good spouse is somebody that can develop those kind of traits. Also, learn how to save your money. I don't care if you're a man or a woman, you need to learn how to not go and blow all your money. You don't need a top-notch Benz. You don't need a Scat Pack or a Hellcat. <laughs> you don't need things that's going to tie you down and make it where you working all the time to pay for things. Keep yourself as light financially as you can. Because right now, you single. You ain't got nobody to worry about but yourself. You can enjoy life. If you're making forty, fifty thousand dollars a year right now as a single person and you young, that's enough money for you to enjoy your life with. Cause you don't got a whole lot of bills depending on where you living at. You know? You can afford to travel. You can afford to go down to uh to uh, a cabin in the woods or something like that in, in Tennessee in a nice area and you can be alone and enjoy nature. You can afford to go to the beach by yourself or with a friend or whatever the case may be. Or even when you start dating, you can afford to, to go on dates and stuff like that. Also, another thing that uh, I had to do, I had to get around people that had a, a a successful mindset, a success mindset, set, right? Where do these people hang out at? Nice hotels, like five-star hotels. I know the rooms may be five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars a night. 
But again, you have to invest in yourself. Even if you don't stay there, a lot of these hotels have restaurants inside the hotel. Make your reservation. Start being where the successful people are at. And people watch. You ain't there to ball and 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 have a, a, a great time and splurge on on all kind of wines and drink, you know what I'm saying? You can do that a little bit if you want to. But you need to be up out there observing what actual successful people are doing, how they carry themselves, how they dress, how they talk. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us, like for instance, we got, I know some some girls in my family, right? They think their idea of getting dressed up to go out and, and attract a man is by getting halfway naked. But when you go to a nice hotel and you and you sit in the lobby and you watch these husbands and wives coming in and out, right? Even if they ain't husbands and wives, it's just young professionals. When you see them walking in and out of the lobby, ain't nobody half naked. They look good. <laughs> they they attractive. They body is looking good. All those things, but you can't see their butt through their clothes. I saw a, a video, it's going viral right now. They were talking about SZA. SZA got on a dress, and it, she you you can see the it's the back of her. She got on a dress that's see-through. It might be made out of the same material this do-rag made out of. You can see her thong and her butt cheeks through the dress. People that are successful, they, they live in the kind of lifestyle that you really should aspire to live, at least for me. You know, and the people that think like me, I know everybody don't think like me, but the people that think like me, you don't want to see no your a woman walking through, or you don't you're not attracted to a woman that's walking somewhere and you can see her actual behind in her dress. Not if you somebody that wanna to have a, a certain kind of life where you are a respectable person where you can go to church and, and you can be a pillar in the community and people know you for being a positive man, a, a good father, a good husband and all that kind of stuff. Most men like that don't want people to be able to go on their wife's social media account and see their actual bear behind. I understand going to the beach and stuff like that. Okay. That's, you know, that's the exception, but a lot of girls will put on a dress and go out to eat in an outfit that is see-through. That's not classy. And I know that's probably gonna upset some people, but I'm being honest. It's not sexy to be in a nice establishment like Ruth Chris or uh, Ocean Prime or, you know, just any nice five-star restaurant where when, the, the, uh, when you order the food, you order your meat, and then you order like a, a shareable side. <laughs> when you when you go into a restaurant like that, you look up and you see people that look like they came straight out of the hood, out of the ghetto, and they taking pictures every five seconds. They being loud and they half naked and, you know, they smell like weed and all that other kind of stuff. They draw the wrong type of attention to themselves and they don't look like they belong. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. I'm just trying to be honest with you and, and help you to see how people look at you when you out and about. And that's important because if you somebody that want a wife or a husband, people it's important to to remind to remember how people that people are going to look at you and have a certain perception of you based on how you carry yourself. You cannot be out here sagging. You know, everybody can see your draws, you know, and <laughs> you just look rough like you came straight off the block and then you go to one of these nice establishments thinking that you're going to meet a, a, a top tier woman that has her head right and has her head on, the, on her shoulders and has uh, morals and character and got a, a nice career and a, come from a nice background and all that other kind of stuff, 
and think you're not going to, you know, you can't come off the block and think you're going to attract that if you looking like you ain't supposed to be there. You know what I'm saying? You're not attracting the, the best quality woman if you're going to come in a, 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 an establishment half-stepping. It's just the way it is. You know? What else I want to say? Also, it kind of go back to when I was talking about reading the books and, and the podcasts and stuff like that that I was uh, listening to. What you got to understand is this. You have to be interesting. So you need to be learning skills. You need to be learning new hobbies. Uh, take up painting. Take up bike riding. Take up skating. Take up uh, photography. Take up doing something that's an actual skill. Something that when you sit down and, and you finally start going on dates and stuff like that, right? You can actually talk about things and be interesting. We don't want to necessarily sit to the table and talk about your Instagram followers. <laughs> we don't want to sit around and and have a, a dead conversation with somebody and it's so, oh yeah, so uh, what you like to do? Oh yeah? Or oh, what club you be going to? Oh, okay, that's what's up. So when was your last relationship? Oh yeah? How that last? How how long that uh, lasted? Why it ended? Them the questions you need to ask as well. But if you want somebody to like you, you gotta be able to talk. So learn a skill. <laughs> and um, I'm I'm gonna show y'all something, right? A lot of women, especially black women. We focus on what dudes have, like the car they drive. And I'm gonna be honest with you, a lot of a lot of guys, a lot of black men, we think that in order to get a, a fly woman, we gotta have a nice car. We gotta have a nice, you know, nice jewelry set up. We gotta wear certain types of clothes. You know, we gotta be able to go to a certain restaurant, so whatever the case may be. We actually believe that we have to have those things, right? So we strive to get it. Problem is, there's a lot of men that don't have good intentions. They're not really uh, good guys that know the same thing. So they'll focus on getting their bag right so they can get those things, and they know they'll be able to attract certain types of women. So they'll go get a Benz and <laughs> they'll go in and, you know, get some some Louis shoes and all that other kind of stuff because certain black women feel like that is what a, a, a high quality man has. But I'm going to tell you this. You don't know what you don't know. There's there's men that don't that won't spend a whole lot of money on their car. There's men that won't spend a whole lot of money on clothes. They look nice, they dress nice, they carry themselves nice, they clean and all that kind of stuff. They groom themselves well, but they don't necessarily feel the need to go out to go out and buy an S550 or S500 or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? I talked about going to the bike trail earlier, right? Let me tell you what I did. When COVID hit, right, I messed around and um, decided I wanted to pick up uh, biking. I wanted to uh, buy me a, a, a bike. Now, I could have went to Walmart or, uh, yeah, I could have went to Walmart and got me a $200 bike. And um, I could have started riding and wouldn't have been no problem, right? But I said, I want to go to a bike shop. I want to get me a nice bike. Went in the bike shop. They tell me, oh, this bike right here costs 900 How much that one is? That one, 2000 What? <laughs> I'm not finna spend that kind of money on a bike, dude. Say, test drive it. Go out in the parking lot, hit a few corners in. I'm like, man, I see why. I see why this bike costs all this money. So I, um, 
realize something. Not when, as I'm going to the bike trails and stuff like that, I'm seeing guys with the whole biker outfit on. They got on the spandex and the helmet. Look like they they trying to be on um, Lance Armstrong, right? I had no idea that these guys' bikes cost more than a Nissan Altima. <laughs> Let me show you something. Let me see. Let me show. Look at this right here. This is the Trek.com website. It's a brand of bike. This bike right here, 9,500. Look at all this. Look at this. Now, you probably thinking to yourself, why would I want a man that ride a bike? And that's a good question because <laughs> you definitely need a man that got a car. But... As I said, this right here is a, a, a way to keep yourself fit. It's a, a, a way to get out of the house. And a lot of women are good women, but don't know where to find good men, like successful good men, men that ain't super flashy, that you probably would never notice because they don't spend all their money on their cars and their jewelry and stuff like that. And you will probably see a man riding around on a bike and don't realize that he done spent more than you spent on your car. So you see this man on his bike and you ain't giving him a second thought. As a matter of fact, you probably look at him like he lame because he got that outfit on, <laughs> that Tour de France outfit. But that could be a guy that would actually give you a pretty good life. So... I'm not telling you to only go after these kind of guys. I'm only using it as an example. There's a lot of things in this world that you don't have any access to. You ain't never thought about it. You ain't never experienced it. You never walked in the store to see how what the prices is. You never had any interest in it. But if you did develop some interest in these things, it would give you access to different types of people. And that's one of the things that I'm talking about with this whole video. We talking about upgrading your dating pool. First, you got to update, upgrade yourself, upgrade your mind, get fit, become interesting, get your soul right. You know what I'm saying? And then after you improve yourself and you become a different person, in the Bible, I already say when you accept Jesus, he'll turn you into a new person off the rip. But you also got to live your life. You also got to put yourself out there. Once you do those things to improve yourself, you got to be able to put yourself in the environment that you need to be in to meet different types of people. If you used to dealing with the little hood guy, that ain't going nowhere. It's a dead end road dealing with a little hood guy. So do what you got to do to upgrade yourself Change the way you dress, change the way you carry yourself, change the way you talk. You talking all ghetto and cussing all the time. Every other word come out your mouth is a cuss word. All you listen to is the city girls. Change the things you listen to. Change your interests. Once again, become interesting. And then put yourself in front of men that will actually be good men. Again, the example about the bike. I'm not saying that guys that ride bikes are going to be the best. Man. It's probably some dogs riding around on these bicycles. <laughs> I'm just saying that you need to train your mind to look at things that you wouldn't norm normally look at. You mo Everybody got a type. Everybody has a certain type of thing that they're attracted to. And you may think that a guy riding on a bike won't be attractive to you. But what I want you to also understand is once you become new, once you upgrade yourself and you become a different person, you start thinking different, your values become different. The, thing, the people you're attracted to will also be different. The guy riding on the bike or riding on the rollerblades at the, at the trail, at the, you know, it's everybody 
every uh, big cities have nice parks you can go to, right? They spend a lot of money on these parks. They have uh, beautiful landscaping. The trail is up. Is is the upkeep on them is 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 immaculate. Look like a golf course when you walk through the grass. They got the lake out there or the pond with the swans and ducks swimming around. You know, it's, it's families out there at the park, all those things. Big cities have have these areas. Go to these kind of areas and train your eye to pick up on things that you usually don't pick up on. Like the guy that's on a bike like this. Go to the coffee shop in the morning early. Early bird get the worm. Hustlers get up early. Good men get up early. Hard workers get up early. They probably sitting in Starbucks on their computer doing college work or they doing some business stuff, maybe building a website, maybe editing a video, maybe, you know what I'm saying? It's all kind of things. Go to Starbucks. They got coffee shops inside of uh, bookstores and stuff like that. Go to those areas. Go to the places that you don't usually go to, places that you probably going to feel uncomfortable walking in at first because you're going to feel like you're an outsider. <laughs> and to be honest with you, that's a good thing because that's a sign that you're growing as a person when you become comfortable in them in them uh, spots, you know? So it's, a probably, it's probably a lot more things that uh, I can add to this, but I don't want to make this video end up being an hour long. You know, I'm already at 36 minutes. It's just, I got, I got some cousins that I got in mind that, you know, it's, it's a lot of podcasts, a lot of red pill podcasts where they claim that women are asking too much of men. Well, I happen to know a lot of women that aren't asking enough and they're settling for bottom of the barrel and they get in bottom of the barrel because they're living at the bottom of the barrel. So my idea is to upgrade your life. And once you do it, the way I just said, your perspective is going to change on life. Your values will change. You know, your relationship with God will change. All of these things I said will impact your life in a positive way. And I understand I may have said something that'll upset you. Good. If you upset, then you might need, you might be the person that need this video. I heard people say similar stuff in videos that I used to watch. And it forced me to look at myself. I understood that there was a lot of stuff that I learned throughout my life that was toxic, that was destructive, that was ignorant. And I was applying that stuff to my life, thinking it was cool, thinking it was who I was. Then when people started showing me things outside of what I was used to, it intrigued me after a while. I sat and watched podcasts and YouTube videos and tra watching travel uh, vlogs. People was traveling the, out of the country and documenting their whole travel, um, the, the whole trip and you know, uh, people was buying certain cars and I was watching videos of people going in jewelry stores, buying luxury watches and all that kind of stuff. A lot of times our people, we don't look at things unless they shiny. Men was going to buy watches that cost more than these rappers watches with all these diamonds on them. And they ain't have not the first diamond. To us, because it ain't got the diamonds, it looked like it's trash. It looked like it's a, a basic watch, like a Seiko or something like that. But them people done spent house money on that watch. You do not understand <laughs> that there is a lot of things that have value in this world, but they don't have value to you because you don't know. Again, you don't know what you don't know. You need to be exposed to different people, different circles. The internet is a great place to be if you want to accomplish that. If you want to upgrade your mind and and you know start to to see value in places that you never saw it before, you can learn about that stuff online. To me, if I saw a $100,000 painting 
it wouldn't mean nothing to me because I'm not interested in art like that. Like not painting. I like it. And when I see it in nice hotels and all that kind of stuff, when I see it in these nice mansions and stuff like that, on you know, these shows I be watching and I be on Realtor.com looking at uh, houses and stuff, just seeing what's out there. When I see how the houses are staged with all the nice art on the wall and stuff, it look good. But I don't know if it's a hundred dollar painting or a ten thousand dollar painting. But guarantee you, it's some people with some expensive art hanging on their walls. And we'll walk right by it and won't even think twice about it. There's men and women that we walk by every day that would be a great husband or a great wife. But because we value things that really don't have much value in the long term, we'll walk by that person and never give them the time of the day. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. Good men and good women are everywhere. When you hear people say, oh, ain't no more good men, ain't no more good women, that's because these people are, they don't want to grow, they don't want to change, and they keep going to the same place, fishing in the same, <laughs> the same water, and they pull out the same person in a different body. It's that simple. But I'm going to go and cut this video off right here. I'll see y'all on the next one.